Right, well, when modern terrorism begins is the 1890s. It's associated with anarchism. And it's mostly about um, extreme nationalist political movements that are using terror to make a point. Um, anti-bourgeois, anti-capitalist, not always Marxist, more anarchist. Big issue in the 1920s and 30s. Um, some dramatic episodes, the murder of presidents and kings, throwing bombs into the French National Assembly, the kind of things that terrorists today would love to do, but they failed miserably to kill heads of state and heads of government and to target politicians. They seem to target citizens. Anarchists only ever targeted serious people, VIPs. That was their role in life. Um, it's moved in the 1960s and 70s into ethno-terrorism uh, groups that were secessionist or groups that wanted independence two oldest in Northern Ireland of course and uh, and in um, the Basque country both beginning in 1969 um, and now of course uh, religious Islamic fundamentalist but also I would say fundamentalist in general so it's fundamentalism just being a, a, a catch-all term for groups that from a religious or non-religious point of view just don't believe in compromise don't believe in negotiation uh, just believe in a kind of utopian society purity is all important so whether you're looking at Tim McVeigh and the Oklahoma bombings which is a fundamentalist Protestant militia movement or whether you're looking at Al-Qaeda in 9-11 fundamentalism is the, is, is the phenomenon which wasn't the case in the 1890s when it was anarchism and a kind of anti-bourgeois critique of uh, what Western societies, European societies and also American societies had become. It's, I think, in its religious manifestation, it's probably burning itself out. Uh, there may be another generation. The United States has successfully defeated Al-Qaeda, has successfully destroyed most of the organization at enormous costs, of course, to itself and, and to others. But I would think that the future of terrorism is anti the anti parts of the anti-globalization movement turning to violence and away from street protests of the kind we've seen in Seattle and Hong Kong and elsewhere. And also eco-terrorism, extreme environmental movements, who don't believe that Durban conferences or global warming summit meetings are going to actually do the job and that they have to make their own point. I'm quite surprised. I mean, there are eco-terrorist groups already in places like Canada, very, very small, very localized. I'm quite surprised that, in fact, we haven't seen much of this yet. I think it's just a matter of time. Uh, terrorism has always existed, but it's mostly been a phenomenon of states against their own citizens. Uh, whether you go back to the French terror of Robespierre, or the French Revolution, or you go back beyond that, um, the kind of campaigns in the Roman Empire or elsewhere, or beyond that, even. Non-state terrorism is a very recent phenomenon, and in its present modern manifestation is purely a phenomenon of the very late 19th century. But of course, the first non-state terrorist movements were, I suppose, the assassins in the Middle East in the 12th century, which again was a religious fundamentalist movement, but a movement within Islam, not between Islam and anyone else. That was the first set of, of suicide bombers, effectively, and, 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 and terrorists. But they didn't have a political message. So it depends how you define terrorism. If you define it as a political phenomenon, then it's modern. It's largely Western in origin. It's been exported like so much from the West to the non-Western world. It's being copied elsewhere and it's self-replicating. So it's self-sustaining, it reproduces itself, it changes its protein in nature. You'll never eradicate it. Uh, it's with us. I think it's part of the modern condition.